Hello, I'm Richard Toy. I'm here in Gibraltar at the Garrison Library at the Bordering on Brexit conference and with me is Dr. Oliver Botelli who gave an excellent paper this morning uh, on um, themes surrounding historical memory and particularly to do with Bristol and the way that the slave trade has been sort of remembered and presented. Can you tell us a bit more? Um, yes, because uh, what is interesting is that Bristol is part of what I call the left and size of memory. A lot has been done about Bristol and the representation of the past, uh, changes in the urban landscape. However, there's still much resistance in terms of um, articulating the legacies of the past, sorry, me, the legacies of the past and their implication into um, questions such as uh, discrimination, identity, and things like that. And Bristol has done an incredible amount of work in the last perhaps 20 years or so. Yes, you were, you were drawing uh, the contrast with the situation when these debates started with, with the situation now. Yes, that's right. In the 1990s it was controversial, accepted that the, the past would be represented in museums and things like that. Uh, the debate about uh, one of the most important uh, characters in Bristol, Colston, um, was brewing but not that much. In fact, people were questioning the relevance of um, Britain as a father of the city, while other groups were saying that, well, this is a, a, a man who uh, was involved in the slave trade and who is glorified by the city, so something must be done, because as you might know, you have uh, Colson Hall, yes. streets, I mean, a lot of things named after him. Yeah. So now, 2018, we've reached a point where the statue won't be removed, and that is very important because it's very different from the root, root mass yeah. hall uh, movement. The statue at the moment won't be removed, but there's a, a debate about the plaque. The initial plaque was very brief about uh, his philanthropist uh, deeds and uh, how great he was, a wise man, and, and so on and so forth. Now they're talking about adding his um, his role, adding more information about his role in the transatlantic slave trade and his views generally about uh, trading in, 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 uh, in African captives. And so really, I think that sort of by the end of the paper, you were sort of telling quite a positive story that sort of the progress has been made. Are there any lessons which can be drawn for other places around the world? Or is the situation in Bristol so unique that you can't just sort of reproduce it? And um, I don't know. I would say that what is interesting is that uh, every single place has to find its own way to deal with um, uh, controversial, contradictory uh, narratives of the past. So it's really down to each city to find their own solution. Having said that, uh, Bristol explores seven avenues, history, uh, urban landscape, uh, but also art, a lot of it, art, and uh, led by grassroots uh, commu community groups, uh, led by um, concerned citizens, activists, and these people work together. Okay, they were a lot of fights, yeah. but you, you know. said in your paper that uh, mm -hmm. you didn't think that English people were <laughs> likely to shout at each other in public, but you were proved wrong. Yes, I was proved wrong, but things got, you know, they got hitted and then they got better. Yeah. Um, there are still a lot of things that, that you know, we can look at in terms of rewriting or uh, actually writing a more inclusive history of Bristol, the history of those who have been not really forgotten, but not talked about that much, um, people of African descent in particular. Because the focus is on that white man, Colston, um, for, for, good, for good reasons, but perhaps it's time to move away from him and, 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 and let other characters shine and tell a different story of Bristol. Olivet, thank you very much. Thank you.